everyone, it's Rose Hamilton from PTO Today, and I'm here with MJ Misselhorn from Movie Licensing USA. MJ works with uh, PTOs and PTAs and schools and libraries all over the country, helping folks understand movie licensing. And we thought it would be a great idea to have a chat with MJ today and talk about issues around movie licensing. So, MJ, one of the things I wanted to start off with, it's a big question that a lot of PTOs and PTAs have, is why do we need a movie license? Right. Yeah, you know, thank you so much, Rose, for having me here today. You know, as a uh, PTA mom, I have had these questions come up in our meetings, and I try to do my absolute best to share this information, not only with my customers, but with the parents that I have in my school as well. And the, the most important thing you need to know is that anytime you utilize anybody's art, outside the privacy of your home, like for your own home use, you have to have a license. So it's not just movies, it's music, it's pictures, it's everything. Mm -hmm. um, Movie Licensing USA um, makes it super duper easy for our schools to be compliant and have the licensing they need to show the movies outside of their home um, and also share the information and just make sure that you know everybody at the school is aware of the comprehensive coverage that we offer to make those showings outside of your home and inside of your schools legal. Right, so if I bought a DVD at Walmart or Target and brought it to the school and showed it for a family movie night, why am I not supposed to do that without a license? Gotcha, yeah. So when you buy a movie um, or rent it or borrow it, mm -hmm. um, you have the rights to show it inside your home. Okay. So those films that you buy come with home use rights only. Okay. So as soon as you take this um, item outside of the home, the home rights no longer apply because you're not in your home. Okay. So um, that's why a movie at Target is only you know twenty thirty dollars, um, but you go to watch a movie in a theater and they've paid significantly more to be able to broadcast that. Right. And so now when you take this home use to a church or a park or a college or a school or a library, you get the appropriate licensing to make that legal. Okay. And would the same thing apply, say, if I had an account for Netflix or HBO Go or something? Can I? Am I able to? I can't use that at school either. Well, you know, from our perspective, the licensing covers any legal copy. Okay. So what we tell our customers is as long as it's not something that has been recorded and taken and, you know, something that got shipped in from another country perhaps, you know, <laughs> you're totally fine to show it. So from okay. our perspective, any legal copy is allowed with your licensing. We don't speak for other streaming companies themselves, right. so we recommend if you have any questions to just chat with them directly. So we know then that it is appropriate to have a license. Yes. We see that there are different kinds of pricing, mm -hmm. which I think some PTO and PTA leaders have a little trouble sorting through sometimes. Yeah, so if we could talk a little bit about how much it costs sure. and the difference between, say, a brand new movie versus an older movie, um, if you want to show it one time versus multiple times, there's a lot of different yeah. issues there around the pricing. Yeah, absolutely. and and. Um, you can call us anytime for questions and answers. We don't have automated systems where you get lost in a loop of <laughs> dialing and numbers. Yes. So we will make it super easy for you. But to make it even easier, just to tell you on the video right now, um, our licensing is the most comprehensive um, coverage out there. So 99% of the time, the movies that you're going to want to show are going to be covered under our license. So it's great to contact us and talk through those options. You know, most of our schools choose the annual licensing option because you can then cover the entire school, not just for the planned events, like your movie nights and your fundraising events, but also anything unplanned. If the teachers want to have a holiday party or end of the school events or an assembly in the gym or even aftercare. So it covers everybody for all of the movies, 24 okay. hours a day, seven days a week. You know, so that makes it really easy. Now, if you just wanted to kind of try it out, try before you buy, then you could do a single event license. And that is when it comes into play as far as the cost difference goes. You know, yeah. older titles will be um, a 128 rate, and then the newer titles will be 172. And that's one time? One time, okay. one movie shown in the school. Okay. And then once you go to an annual blanket licensing coverage, the price ranges based on the enrollment, but we're not talking anything outrageous. It's in the 500-ish, you know, higher or lower range. And then your whole school is covered for the entire year. 
So that would be a smaller school would be a little bit on the lower end of that mm -hmm. range and obviously a bigger school Absolutely. would pay a little bit more. Absolutely. And does that annual cost, does that cover brand new movies or is everything. there, okay, so that covers everything. It's everything in our library. So okay. like I said, there, there's no other licensing agent that can offer the coverage that we do. So if you know you want to watch a particular movie and you call us up and we license it, yep. we are your source for that. We okay. are the folks that will help you get that. You know, you can take that movie, you can advertise it, um, you know, out to your kiddos. Yep. We have complimentary posters and bookmarks and tickets and all kinds of other fun, great resources on our website. So we make it really easy to search, promote your event, share the information with the schools. Everything is kind of a one-stop shop when you call right. us. And so if I'm a PTO thinking, geez, is there a situation where I should just do the one-time license? Mm -hmm. I mean, would there be one? You mentioned maybe if they want to just test it out, but yeah. is there any other reason to do that? You know, most of our schools choose the annual option yep. because then it's very easy for them. They don't have to call us in and, and find out, you know, oh, is this covered or do I need to get something else done? Once they have the license, they're kind of set. So okay. it's really the easiest way to do it. Okay. So I would say unless you're in a situation where you want to try it out first, okay. that would be the best time to do a single event license. Okay. Um, but most of our schools choose the annual. So okay. it really makes it easy and then they don't have to worry. And a lot of our schools, mine included, share that cost with um, other places in the school. So like the PTA chips in a portion and then the library budget or okay. insurance budget or other budgets in the school chip in a portion as well since it's a whole coverage. And so uh, all different groups are involved. So we know that you need a license and we've talked a little bit about the pricing. Now one of the other questions we hear a lot, we've seen it in our PTO and PTA leaders group is, can I charge admission when I'm doing a family movie night? And there seems to be some confusion around that. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting because right before I came out here, I got an email from a customer, and she said, well, I'm not charging admission, so I don't need my license. And yes. I said, oh, well, you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then I just explained that we stay away from the word admission because it's not a, a profiting event when it's at a school. It's an event we definitely want you to be able to use as a, an ability to raise funds. Right. So if you want to raise money for new band uniforms, you might say, hey, there's a suggested donation going to our band uniforms, and you can list out you know, $5 a family or a dollar per child, or you can get away from talking about pricing with regards to the movie as, as a whole and just say, hey, we're having a spaghetti dinner, and the spaghetti dinner is $5, and you can watch uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs while you eat that spaghetti dinner. So right. something fun like that. Okay. Or um, a really popular event that we hear a lot about is Parents' Night Out. Yes. So with the holidays coming up, you know, the parents need a break, they need to go Christmas shopping, the kiddos get dropped off, you have a movie, a craft, a snack, the parents get a fairly affordable babysitting, and yep. you're having this fun event with the movie as part of it, and you're using it as a great fundraiser for the parent group, so right. that's a great way to raise funds. So just stay away from that word admission, and you're good to go. So, and we're talking about actually uh, raising funds at the event, yep. but we know that for some groups, the cost of the license is, dip, is a little difficult yeah. for them. Do you have any suggestions of how they could get some support or fundraise ahead of time sure. to cover that cost? Yeah, absolutely. So, if you are going to, you know, you know you want to have a movie night, say, in November, December, then you can start fundraising right at Back to School. And you can say, you know, we're going to do, a, a in our St. Louis, we have TJ's Pizza. So, you could say, I'm going to do a TJ's Pizza fundraiser, and then we're going to use those funds, and then I'll buy our movie license. And then that kind of starts the great cycle of being able to use movie events to to raise additional funds for your parent group okay. and okay. then you'll be able to renew each year so you okay. know yeah yeah that sounds good a couple other questions on things that people we've seen be a little bit confused about yeah is there a difference between um, having a movie inside and having a movie outside in terms of your your licensing sure yeah um, the licensing is different um, for every different type of site. Okay. So we have licensing for parks, colleges, churches, hospitals, cruise ships. Um, every time you want to show a movie, there's a different type of license required. Okay. We have this specially discounted blanket license available to public libraries and public schools exclusively. So to have that 
um, be available for our publicly funded entities is really a huge value and benefit uh, to our customers. And the, just the restriction is keeping it indoors. So okay. once it goes outdoors, then it would fall under like our Parks and Rec or General Licensing Division. So, yeah. and, and could a PTO get that absolutely. as a separate and a different license? Absolutely, absolutely. We make it easy for them to do that because we're all the same company. We're all in the same building. You know, Swank has been around 80 years. So, you know, yeah. they've, they're, they're the people that will help out with that. And we don't have to send them to another company. It's all handled in-house. Okay, so what about state to state? This mm. is one other thing we've seen, yes. again, in our group. A little bit of confusion about if there are different rules depending on where you live right. in terms of movie licensing. Right, yeah, I did, you know, it's interesting. I had a question about that the other day from a Texas customer, and there is not a different state to state exactly. Um, what it is is that we work with some groups and they have maybe um, organized state agreements. So like, um, for example, we work with the Washington State PTA and offer a state agreement with that group. So if you're in Washington State and you're a PTA, you have the benefit of being able to you know, get your license through them, through mm -hmm. us, same coverage, same everything. Um, but unless there's a state agreement set up or perhaps you have a school that's been grandfathered in from 17 years ago when they first started this license, they might be paying a different rate, you know? Okay. Yeah. But if you have school A in California and school B in Massachusetts, and they're the same size, and they both want to get a quote on the license today, it's going to be the same rate. Okay, and if I were a, a PTO from Massachusetts, yeah. and I called you, would you be able to help me find out if there was any state-related you have that information yes. in case they, okay. Yeah, right. we have a database of all the schools in the country. Now, Grant, if one just opened yesterday, we probably don't know about it yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, we have a database. So we'll be able to tell you um, if your school has a license, if your school's ever had a license, if your school's ever been part of a group or a district license. Okay. Um, and so a lot of our parents have asked us, you know, they'll call in and they'll say, oh, I need to buy a license. And we're like, actually, your district already has you covered. And they're like, whoa, and they and get so excited, you know, because yeah. then they don't I have to be. worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right, right. So we always kind of tell, you know, you we start at the top. If, you know, if your district or your state has an agreement, that's great. If they don't, you know, next to maybe sometimes a few PTAs will get together and do a group license. Yeah. So we, we try to look at the best solutions for you and your school and the schools in your area. Okay. So we know that we do need a movie license, and we've talked some about the costs associated. So now I'm a PTO leader, I'm really excited about doing a family movie night. What's the best way to get the word out about my event? Yeah, so when um, you're on our website, there's a section where you can go and print things out. You, we actually give you the ability to print out posters, bookmarks, tickets, even activity sheets for the little ones. And when you utilize uh, those promotional materials, those are designed to be direct to the parents. So you can have flyers at the school, you can post them up around the mm -hmm. school, you can send home tickets with the kiddos to remind them that the movie night is coming up, kind of like they do with pizza, pizza nights and mm -hmm. other fun right. dining nights. Yeah. Um, and then you just want to be careful that when you're on a public facing like social media or television or newspaper or radio that you um, have some guidelines that you follow with regard to the title and the uh, studio. So you can say family movie night uh, at ABC Elementary Friday at 7 call for more details and then you know give the email address of the the movie night coordinator or the number of the school and then they can get the information direct from you. And those are just guidelines that we have in place for public advertising um, but direct to parent, direct to the school, feel free to use the promotional materials to really maximize the attendance. So for the for public facing advertising, we should we shouldn't use the na the actual name of the movie. Right. You would want to maybe allude to the title. So you could say movie about a lost fish, you know? <laughs> that kind of thing. Okay. So, final question, I'm not pointing a finger at anyone. But we know that there are some groups that maybe have shown a movie, even recently, um, without a license. Um, are they going to go to movie jail? <laughs> movie jail. Yeah. Well, you know, there's not technically a movie jail. Yes. But um, we get calls from customers all the time that have gotten cease and desist letters okay. for music, pictures, movies. Like I said kind of at the beginning, anytime yeah. you take somebody's art and you're utilizing it in a way without permission, 
you know, they they want you to just make sure you have the appropriate permissions. Right. So there's no movie licensing jail simply because once a school realizes that they may have planned something or have done something without the proper coverage and we notify them, hey, just you need to make sure you get this license, here's your options, it's really easy, then they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I did something incorrect, and then yes. they take care of it. Okay. You know, um, right. it never usually goes beyond that. So like, you won't see a lot of people in the news like, oh, so-and-so is utilizing all these movies without a license because yes. as soon as they find out they need one, they take care of it. They set that good example for the kiddos and they do the right thing. Right. So those that were covering the, the top issues and concerns that all of you might have about movie licensing, MJ, you are a wealth of information. Oh, That's you. great stuff that you've been sharing. You. Uh, so MJ had mentioned that she's with uh, customer service at Movie Licensing USA. You can call there to get information if you have questions about movie licensing. And um, you can also post questions in the PTO PTA Leaders Group. And we really thank you for being with us today, and we hope that this has been helpful. Thank you so much, Rose. Thank you. Thank you.